The U.S. Navy remains a global leader in cutting-edge naval warfare. Armed with the latest tech, it can project power anywhere on Earth. From railguns that fire projectiles at incredible speeds to lasers that burn through targets from miles away. Get ready for a look at the Navy's next-gen firepower. America's top engineers are pushing the limits to turn science fiction into reality. One standout is the Navy's railgun. Development of the electromagnetic railgun, YMRG, began in 2005. This revolutionary weapon fires rounds at over 7,500 miles per hour, about Mach 10, using magnetism instead of gunpowder. Unlike traditional guns that rely on explosive charges, the railgun uses electric currents to launch metal projectiles at extreme speeds. The result, faster, cheaper, and safer ammunition with reduced onboard explosives. The best platform for this system is the Zumwalt-class destroyer, powered by massive Rolls-Royce generators that produce 78 megawatts, enough to feed the railgun's energy needs. The Navy aimed to boost its range from 100 to 230 miles, with destructive energy reaching 64 megajoules. But after spending 15 years and $500 million, the project was paused. The Navy shifted focus to hypersonic missiles and combat lasers, which have already shown great promise. Laser weapons are the next frontier. One of the most advanced is the Solid State Laser Technology Maturation, SSLTM, program, designed to produce the Laser Weapon System Demonstrator, LWSD, with 150 kilowatts of power. It's built on experience from the and slash SEQ-3 laws, first tested aboard the USS Ponce in the Middle East. SSLTM packs five times the punch of its predecessor. Meanwhile, the optical dazzling interdict Navy, Odin, takes a different approach. It disables enemy drones by blinding their sensors, causing them to crash. It's already deployed on eight Arleigh Burke-class destroyers. Then there's Helios, high-energy laser with integrated optical dazzler and surveillance. It merges drone-blinding tech with a 60-kilowatt combat laser, capable of targeting boats, and UAVs up to five miles away. Installed on the USS Preble, Helios can also serve as a surveillance tool when not engaging threats. Its modular design allows power upgrades up to 150 kilowatts. Still, even at that level, stopping a hypersonic missile remains a challenge. This is where Hellcap, the high-energy laser counter ESCM program, comes in. It's a flexible prototype designed for government testing and demos of high-energy lasers meant to shoot down anti-ship cruise missiles and eventually even hypersonic weapons. At its core is a powerful 300-kilowatt laser. Hellcap tackles the challenges of modern missile threats by factoring in atmospheric turbulence, auto-target ID, precise aiming, and stable tracking, even in heavy interference. Engineers are also working on boosting beam control and scaling power up to 1 megawatt. But perhaps its biggest advantage? Laser ammo is nearly free compared to the Navy's other cutting-edge weapons. Now, onto hypersonic missiles, key to the Navy's future firepower. The long-range hypersonic weapon, LRHW, nicknamed Dark Eagle, is a ground-launch system under Army development. It uses a large booster to launch an unpowered glider, the Common Hypersonic Glide Body, CAGB. Once released at altitude, the CHGB glides toward its target at hypersonic speed. One unit costs around $41 million, with a range of 1,725 miles and a top speed of Mach 17. Likely launch platforms include Zumwalt-class destroyers and Virginia-class Block V submarines. Another major Navy program is OASUW Increment 2, better known as HALO, hypersonic air-launched OASUW. HALO is considered a national imperative by the Navy. It's a fast, long-range air-launched missile designed to counter advanced threats at standoff distances, even in heavily contested or denied zones. Likely platforms include Navy F divided by a minus 18S and Air Force B, 1B bombers. Despite all this focus on hypersonics, the Navy hasn't forgotten its long-serving workhorse, the Tomahawk. First developed in the 1970s by General Dynamics, the Tomahawk has seen action in the Gulf War, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Yemen, and Syria. Over 2,200 have been used in combat, and as of 2020, the Navy had around 4,000 in stock, with some 10,000 launchers deployed.
The missile has gone through six main versions, used to cross air, sea, and land platforms, with both conventional and nuclear options. Engineers chose a liquid fuel turbojet to give it longer range than a solid fuel rocket and better low altitude flight to avoid radar. The newest Block 5 variant upgrades the original with modern navigation and comms gear, making it more resistant to electronic warfare and radar detection. The Block 5A maritime strike version can hit moving ships, while the Block 5B, armed with the joint multi effects warhead system Jamuz, can take out hardened targets with precision. The upgrade proved so successful that all Tomahawk Block 4 missiles were slated for conversion to Block V, while the older Block 3 versions were retired and demilitarized. Today's Navy missile cruisers carry up to 122 launchers, and destroyers hold between 90 and 96. While the Tomahawk's basic concept may be aging, its ability to evolve with modern threats ensures it remains one of the Navy's most powerful long-range weapons for years to come. No discussion of missile power is complete without mentioning the legendary Trident submarine-launched ballistic missile, the UGM-133A Trident II, or Trident D-5, first deployed in March 1990, remains a central pillar of the U.S. nuclear triad. With a top speed of Mach 24 and a range of 7,500 miles, these missiles are deployed aboard 14 Ohio-class submarines, each capable of carrying 24. Thanks to their high accuracy, comparable to land-based systems, and large payload, Trident II missiles support effective nuclear deterrence with fewer submarines and can serve as a credible first-strike weapon. In 2002, the Navy launched the D-5 Life Extension Program, LEP, later expanded as D-5 LE-2. By 2020, Plans were in place to deploy the first D-5 LE-2 missiles aboard the 9th Columbia-class submarine in fiscal year 2039, with service expected through 2084. Another major advancement in missile defense is the SM-3 Interceptor, part of the Aegis Combat System, designed to counter short- and medium-range ballistic missiles. The SM-3 has also proven itself capable in space successfully shooting down the failing USA-193 satellite in 2008 at an altitude of 130 nautical miles. This marked its first anti-satellite operation, made possible through extensive software modifications that enabled the system to lock onto a satellite instead of a missile. The SM-3 Block IIA, developed by Raytheon and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, added advanced sensors and greater agility enhancing its ability to intercept intercontinental ballistic missiles. This upgrade not only strengthens U.S. missile defense, but also improves the security of allies, like Japan, in the face of regional threats, such as North Korea. The Navy's arsenal also includes other key munitions, the AIM-120 AMROM, Advanced Medium-Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, AGM-88 Harm, High-Speed Anti-Radiation Missile, and JDAM. Joint Direct Attack Munition Smart Bombs. These weapons enable precision strikes in any weather, suppress enemy defenses, and continue to receive upgrades in range, accuracy, and lethality. And of course, no Navy fleet is complete without torpedoes. The heavy MK-48 is designed to take out enemy submarines and high-speed surface vessels. Since its introduction in the 1970s, the MK-48 has undergone several upgrades. The latest version is quieter, features improved propulsion, better resistance to countermeasures, and includes the Advanced Bass, Common Broadband Advanced Sonar System, allowing it to lock onto targets at greater distances. The lightweight MK-50 is tailored for hunting fast, deep-diving enemy submarines, and can be launched from both aircraft and surface ships. Its propulsion system uses gaseous sulfur hexafluoride, creating combustion byproducts that shrink in volume an advantage in deep-sea operations where water pressure is a critical factor. Despite being over 90 years old, the M2 remains a frontline weapon thanks to continuous updates. The M2A1 version, introduced in 2010, brought key improvements. A quick-change barrel with a carrying handle, flash suppressor, fixed headspace and timing, a redesigned bolt, and an added safety mechanism. In fact, the Army named it one of its greatest innovations of 2011, nearly a century after its invention. From long-range missiles to close-in defense systems, the U.S. Navy has proven its ability to adapt to evolving threats 
both emerging and traditional. Which of these systems impressed you the most? Let us know in the comments below.